Hey, so today I'm going to show you the first two projects that I've done working with the face tracking on the Kinect. Um, first one is going to be mouse tracking with the face, and the second one will be related to this clown mask um, using some music visualization stuff. We'll get to that in a minute. So as you notice there, as I rotate my face left or right or up and down, I'm actually moving the mouse now. Uh, so the way I'm doing that is basically using these rotation numbers in the upper left. So these boxes are the X, Y, and Z rotations um, for the vector that's basically coming out of my face. So as the Kinect does the face tracking with this very helpful face tracking basics that I've very obviously hijacked here, um, what it does is every frame it basically finds where your face is in it and then figures out uh, what angle does it need to rotate that vector at. So how far in the X positive or negative direction, how far in the Y, and then, of course, it doesn't do anything over now, but how far in the Z direction are you rotated? So once I expose that uh, that vector up to the top level and get it at to it, uh, get to it in the Windows uh, API, I can then actually start adjusting where the mouse is moving based on those vectors. So I can't, of course, use just pure rotation numbers. This would be a horrible user experience. So you have to calibrate and smooth that all out. So what I've done here is set a dead zone in the middle where um, I can move my head around and not actually start any movement but as soon as I get out of that I start to do very fine grain movements this is moving only you know one or two pixels per frame um, after that though we actually have an exponential curve so as I move further and further to the side it's gonna move faster and faster and what that lets me do is both like a slight little movement so I can actually click on these things that I want to, um, as well as actually get around the screen just by moving uh, very big gestures. Um, once I had all the movement down and calibrated with these sliders and everything, found some values I'm happy with, I also then added in a click component. So if you've noticed as I've been talking, the model itself is actually deforming as my mouth and eyebrows move. So what I've done here is basically hijack this eyebrow raise animation so that any time my eyebrows go over a certain threshold, it's actually going to send out a left mouse click. Um, so if you can see, if I just move off to the side of the screen and click, it'll actually click on the window behind. Um, so that's it for the mouse component. Uh, honestly, it's not the best to use with a mouse, though I don't actually have to use my hands at all, which is nice. Um, I don't have the fine grain control, both because of the lag on the screen, which you know, obviously needs a lot of work, um, as well as me just not being used to the system, but also just this is not the same as this. Uh, what it is going to be great for is when you get to stuff like looking at a projector or some uh, heads-up displays, and you can actually use your head to really get immersed in you know, a first-person perspective in a game or something like that. And there, when you can actually control the camera based on where you're looking, that's some powerful stuff. Uh, the next component of this is actually a music visualization piece, as I said before. So if you've seen the sample code, the face tracking basics, as it um, gets shipped, it's actually just a bunch of yellow lines drawn on all these different uh, vertices, so that, uh, sorry, the actual sides of the triangles. Uh, so what I've done is modified that to actually draw uh, fully colored in triangles and then the color it uses for each triangle is basically going to increase up the color spectrum from of Roy G. Biv. So the smallest numbered triangles uh, in the basically whole collection, they're all going to be red and they start at the top and then as it moves through each triangle is going to get closer and closer to purple at the far end um, and that gives me the whole rainbow effect. Uh, now that I've colored all of them and I'm looping through them drawing them, what I'm going to do with the music piece is basically the same thing that uh, iTunes does and that I did in the previous video, which is map the bass and how loud the bass is to these red triangles and then uh, the treble and how loud the, you know, the very high pitch noises are to the purple. So as I play a track here, let me, uh, let me go up. using of course the Windows sample stuff, that make it easier here. Uh, 
so now that the music's playing, it actually defaults to making these uh, have an alpha value of zero, meaning that they're completely transparent. Um, once every frame, it's going to update the triangles. What it then does is see how uh, how loud the sound is at a given frequency, and then uh, increase the alpha, which meaning it's actually making the color brighter. Uh, and that way, you can actually just start to see it. So if you notice, you're getting a lot more power in the, in the bass because there's always more power in the low frequencies. But as you hear with the uh, uh, with a cowbell or something, um, you're actually going to get these green tones popping in there. Uh, so let me show you another, another track, get some other ideas. This is very different music, obviously. Sorry again for the quality, but um, you can see in time of the music, it's now going to fill in all of these triangles. Um, so these two things are both, you know, they're obviously still very rough, as you can tell from all this interface, but they're really just proof of concepts as I tried to teach myself how to use C Sharp. This is all in WPF. Um, for the audio processing there, I'm using an uh, open source code package called N-Audio, which is absolutely great product. Um, it's got a lot of different fast Fourier transformation capabilities, as well as you can uh, you know, play and stop all the music. So. Uh, extending that in is uh, pretty simple once you get a hang of that. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, throw them below. I'll put links to all the code packages that I use, some videos of the face tracking basics, um, and then as soon as I can get through it, uh, comments to comments on all the source code. Uh, thanks for watching. I got a few more coming up soon, so keep a lookout.